Welcome back. My name is Tabitha and this is Cabot Cove Knits, a place where we talk knitting and all things Jessica Fletcher. Welcome, welcome. Um, my kids are home. My dogs are home. Everybody's home. Everybody's loud. If background noises bother you, my apologies in advance. Today I have a lot of whips, a lot of knitting, a lot of books to talk about. I have some sewing. So let's just get into it. I have some happy mail. I received this in the mail from a dear friend. And when I tell you Paisley saw the tag and saw that it was Nightmare Before Christmas themed, she stole it from me. So I had to find this in her yarn stash to show everybody and to say thank you so much. I wasn't sure if Paisley was going to make herself something with this because she has been knitting. She's really good at making garter baby blankets. They're really the size of like coasters. Um, so I was going to see if maybe she wanted to make something for her dollies with it. But she's like, well, maybe I want to wear something. And so if that's the case, then I've got to find a pattern for her and knit it myself. But if you want a garter dishcloth or a garter coaster, AKA doll beds. Paisley is your gal. So thank you very much to my dear friend who sent this in. You know who you are. Paisley loves it as usual. She just turned 10 yesterday. And I cannot, cannot believe it. She asked her dad to make her a um, dollhouse for outside. So he got pallets and he made her a dollhouse. And I will insert a photo here of Paisley with her pallet outside tree house, doll house, playhouse that her daddy made her for her birthday and she absolutely loved it. So thank you, thank you. Um, you may have noticed all of my yarn is in plastic baggies, not because of bugs, but um, my husband, in a previous episode, I believe I talked about it, how my husband made the comment, how long can your stash last you if you don't buy any more yarn? Well, I had a birthday three days before Paisley and I got some birthday money and I did order Chicken Lady Fiber Arts uh, advent calendar. So I do have yarn coming, but he goes, how long do you think your stash could last you? And so I was like, hmm. That's a good question because in nine years, we will be debt free, including the mortgage, which is very, very important to us. And I know that seems like a long time, but it's a heck of a lot better than 30 years of having the mortgage and everything. So he's like, I'm not telling you not to buy yarn for nine years, but you have an awful lot of it. And I bet it could last you nine years and not have to buy any more. So. But I do have three Advents coming, which I plan to knit during the Advent season. And maybe, depending on our schedule, I love, I would love to do like a Vlogmas thing. And so that might be my project, is knitting my Advents. I have an Advent coming from Chicken Lady. I bought that for myself for my birthday with my birthday money. And I have an Advent from Holly. It's a Cabot Cove Advent, so of course. And then I have one coming from Anemic Pearly. That might be a little much, but both my kids will be, well, all three of my kids will be in school all day because Bubba will be in first grade. And so I'm thinking I will have eight hours <laughs> of uninterrupted knitting time. So that might be something that we do. Maybe we'll do a, my Advent Vlogmas. I'm not sure yet. I'm not going to overcommit myself or myself like at all because it'll just you know turn into poop so we'll see maybe maybe not um so yeah I bagged up all my yarn because I really should be a better yarn stash owner hoarder and take care of it a little better so I was like yeah let's bag it up let's store it let's clean and dust and do all the things so at first I was like, oh, it'll be so ugly and all the baggies and stuff, but it actually doesn't look that bad. And it's very neat and, <coughs> excuse me, easy for me to pull out, pull it out by the baggie and see what's in it and then pull it, put it right back in instead of pulling a skein of yarn and then it falls all over the place. So put your yarn in baggies <laughs> or not. I don't know. So. 
that I just vomited, word vomited everywhere. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about next. Whips. All right, I have a ton of whips, a ton of whips that I've been working on this past month. I have not really done what I said I was going to do the last time we chatted, but that should be like a given here at Cabot Cove Knits is that I say I'm gonna do things and then I don't do things. But I will say this past month of knitting has been spectacular in that it's been zero stress. I've just pulled out what I've wanted and I've knitted on it or I haven't, or I've cast it on new things. This no stress knitting has been lovely. So my first whip that I'm going to show you is the Painted Daisy Shawl. I did, I think, another section of this. This is going to be a wedding gift for our friends who are getting married on the 10th. And this does not have to be done in time for their wedding. In fact, they're going on a month long honeymoon. So if I have it done in time for when they get back in September, I think that would be better. So Painted Daisy Wedding Gift Shawl by Sunny with a Chance of Knitting. I am knitting it in Hobby Dahlia yarn. I have two more uh, balls of this. Uh, the pattern says to stop after seven sections, which means I would be stopping really soon and going on to the lace border, but I want this to be over six feet wide. So I'm going to continue until I get there. It's super easy to um, modify and to make bigger, and I believe I have enough yarn. So I'm going to keep going until it's the desired width, and then I will do the border and cast off. So super lovely knitting. Oh, I just dropped three stitches. What is new? One, two, three. Okay. So I've worked on this a little bit. I've mainly been focusing on a different shawl blanket. So I haven't touched this a whole lot, but as soon as I get this other shawl done, I'm going to go back to working on this most of the time. Lovely pattern, easy pattern. Painted daisies. I think I said painting diamonds in the last episode, which of course is wrong. So that's one whip. And then I have a quilting whip. I am not the best sewer by any means. I found this quilt a couple months ago, quilt kit on Etsy, and it's gonna be hard to show you, but it's a cat bulldozer quilt. Hopefully y'all can see that. And I put it together in one day of sewing it. The instructions are, were super easy, pre-cut, black and rocks more black and rocks and then of course the cat bulldozer and so I put this together and then I put it up because I wanted to hand stitch it together and I recently found a quilt frame at the local hospice store and I got it for ten dollars and online they go for over a hundred dollars so I thought well that's a huge score so now that I have a quilt frame and it's a standing adjustable quilt frame I'm going to put the backing. The backing is just these rocks and then I have the um, stuff that goes in between the backing and this top and the top and then I'm gonna hand stitch it together. I have no time frame on this one but I thought I would show you guys that I did do some sewing and it will eventually be Waylon's new quilt top. So um, this will mainly be a winter hunting season project when my kids are gone hunting with their dad and I have the house to myself and I can have this in the living room on the quilt frame and not have to worry about a little boy getting into it. My last sewing whip, I did this yesterday. We are going to a wedding next week. It's what I'm making that blanket for and I could not find anything in the stores that I liked or that fit me. I think my taste in clothing, it does not match what is being sold in the stores. I even went thrift store shopping, trying to find like a really cute dress or like a skirt and I couldn't find anything. So I saw this fabric online and I ordered it and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I made myself an A, what is it? An A-line style skirt and it's fairly long. It goes down to my ankles, but I'm gonna, finish the top. I bought a belt today 
because I didn't know how I would um, make sure that it doesn't fall off my body when I'm wearing it. So I was like, well, I'll do the, you know, fix it so it's like that and then I'll attach a belt. That way my belt's holding it up. And then once I have that on and it's the right where I want it on my waist, then I'll figure out how short I want it. But it's probably going to be mid-calf. But it's absolute. the fabric's gorgeous, minus my husband saying that I'm the only person that will look like grandma's couch at the wedding. I was like, whatever, it's gorgeous fabric, so shove it, Tom. I think it's gorgeous. But I think it'll be, I have a green tank top, or I have a, like a mauve colored tank top. I'm not sure which one I'll wear, but, oh, I just poked myself in the eye. <laughs> Anyways, I think it's pretty. So that's the front and then the back. I cut it wrong. And so I have like three seams down here. Because you know when you, I didn't have the back sides facing each other right. And so I had to do some makeshift fixing. And so there's a seam right here. That's not supposed to be here, but I needed more fabric. But I don't think anybody will notice. And if they do, they have no business being down there anyways. But that's the back. And this is the front, and I absolutely love it. I love this fabric. It's probably some of my favorite, favorite fabric, even if it does look like Grandma's couch. But you know what? Grandma has good taste, so that was a heck of a lot better than anything I could find in the stores, anywhere. So hopefully I have that done. Well, I had to have it done by um, the wedding in a couple weeks. I'm going to try and finish it this weekend. All right, my next pile of whips. Again, I've just casted on what I've wanted to or worked on what I'd wanted to, and it's just been very, very relaxing and nice. So my next whip, I have this lovely uh, basket that you can't see that's holding up all my whips. So my next whip is an Andrea Mallory shawl. And as usual, I am mid-row, so and I can't even knit the last knit to the other end without it being a pain in the butt and taking too long. So y'all will just see it like this. Waylon thought when I first started the shawl, Waylon asked me if I was knitting underwear. And it does look like underwear, but no, I am not. Andrea Mallory, I believe this is the Find Your Fade. Or the free year fade. It's the seven skein free year fade shawl. I am using a mini skein set from Farmer's Daughters Fiber. Super easy. I'm not doing a fade like knit two rows of this color, knit two rows of that color. I have, it's kind of like a Halloween autumn. So it'll eventually go from light orange to this orange. And then it'll go into a light brown, darker brown, and then it goes into darks, and then it goes into this really, really pretty purples, and then black. So that's all that is. I'm, it's not a typical fade like how she has you do it. I'm just knitting until I run out of yarn, and then I go to the newest color. So it'll be more of a choppy fade, but it'll be pretty. I haven't worked on it in a couple weeks. I haven't really felt like it, but eventually I'll pull it back out and keep going because it's a really easy pattern now that I've, it took me five times to get the cast on and the couple first um, rounds going because that was a little confusing. All right, this cow, I've done a couple rounds on it since we last talked, but not a whole lot. I put it up for a little bit, even though it's super easy mindless knitting but this is chicken lady fiber arts i know a guy on a stellina dk weight base and i absolutely love it it is so much fun i have two skeins of this and i'm going to knit both skeins into this and then kittner stitch it up and it's going to be like an oversized cowl oh, lovely so much fun I love the Stellina on it. I've never knitted with it before, and when I first saw it, I was like, hmm, that's interesting, and I didn't think I would like it, but it's a lot of fun to knit with. It's glittery, and I love rainbows. So, 
I haven't really worked on it a whole lot, just kind of here and there if I need something mindless. It's really good card knitting. I'll probably pick it back up again in the fall when I'm chauffeuring kids back and forth to school because it's perfect car line school drop off and pick up knitting. My next thing that I have worked on quite a bit is my DK weight scrap jelly roll blanket. I've got three stripes done and I am working on my fourth stripe. I'm just doing two skeins or two strands fingering weight held double, whatever colors I want with whatever scraps held together, not held together. Don't even think, I just run out of yarn and pick up another one and go. That's all it is. And I absolutely love it. I work on this quite a bit. It's, I try and take it with me to church on Sundays and work on it because it's a really good sermon of knit now that we have a new pastor and I've established dominance that I will be knitting during the sermon and he hasn't said anything yet, so which is rather lovely. <laughs> I figure if I just, if his first Sunday there, I'm just knitting during the sermon, it's like an already established thing. He's not going to say anything. And so far it's been true. So lovely. I have it. It's the length I want, but I want it to be as wide as my bed. So I have a, a ways to go. And that's just fingering weight, fingering weight scraps. DK weight jelly roll by K of the bakery bears and all my finger weight minis scraps and whatever. My next whip, this one is a planned, hopefully Christmas gift knit. Um, I started this a couple months ago and put it up. I was going to be a gift, blanket gift, birthday gift that was going to be done in June, but obviously that didn't happen. So I've moved it to Christmas and we'll see how far I get. It's another DK weight jelly roll style is how I'm doing it. But instead of doing scraps, I'm doing squares and it'll be the, um, kind of like the Buffalo plaid. It will be black, orange, and then blue. And Cascade 220, I believe this is worsted weight. So this row will be black and orange, and then my next row will be blue and black, and then I'll switch it off. I think I'm gonna do it eight squares by eight squares. So it won't be too bad, too big, but it'll be a good size blanket for a, um, a teenager for Christmas if I get it done in time. But this also is one that's kind of like no stress and they don't know about it, so I don't feel like I'm pressuring myself to get it done. This is the dreaded, if you're an old mur old Murder Nits viewer, you know this yarn. This is the um, Cousin Sweaters yarn, and I stopped knitting those. Um, and I will not be knitting those anymore, but I have all the lovely yarn left um, from the ones I haven't knit yet. It's this beautiful blue. This was a custom dye job by Kim of Driftwood Yarn and Camp, Yarn and Candles, boy, that's awful. Anyways, special, Kim was a dear friend of mine and unfortunately she passed away in a car accident a little over a year ago. So anytime I knit with Driftwood or I have it, it's a treasured, treasured yarn. Um, There's a lady at my church who has been, um, she does a lot behind the scenes and sometimes I don't, I feel like she's, she's not really thanked a whole lot. She's just kind of always been there and is very dependable. And so I thought her favorite color is blue and I'm going to knit her a shawl. I want to do a lace, uh, lace work, you know, pie shawl. And so I pulled this out of my stash. I have it set aside of when I finish my, um, cause I have two pie shawls right now going. So I think when I, and I really enjoyed having those. So when I finish those two pie shawls, I'm going to cast this on it. It'll be a gift for this lady. As a, I see you, we see you, we love you. Thank you, gift. I figure what a better way to use the yarn than to do that. And it's really pretty. So future, not sure when, um, whip. My next whip 
is the Tree Garth shawl. This one is really hard to show, but I'm on the border and I'm doing a different border than what's in the pattern because I could not understand it. So this one's going to be hard to show as well. This is the Tree Garth shawl by Kit DeWitt. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. 10 out of 10 minus the border. Don't recommend the border, but look at that. I am knitting this in Tuscan Knits Coral colorway. This is a gift. And the person who this gift is for will be here on August 15th. And I really don't want to ship it, so I need to get it done. I don't trust shipping yarn anymore, or not shipping projects like this anymore. Really, really pretty. I cannot wait to see this blocked and opened up. And then this is the cable border that I'm doing. I just found on Pinterest a cable pattern that was easy, that I liked, and I'm knitting it as the bind off since I could not figure out how to do the border you're supposed to do with this. So that's going to take a little while to get all of it. I have like 700 stitches on the needle that I have to bind off in this style, but it'll be really pretty when it's done and I think it'll be a nice finish. So Tree Garth Shawl, Kate DeWitt, I highly recommend, super easy. I know the lace looks complicated, but it was very memorable, easy to uh, memorize. This pattern was super easy to do. This pattern was easy, but I had to look at my um, the chart a lot because it was like a 32 stitch repeat this one was easy and this one was um, not as easy as the other ones but it was still pretty good so 10 out of 10 highly recommend that my last whip and then a future whip my last whip wit whip is another DK weight jelly roll however Last year or the year before, Chicken Lady had a Flower of the Month um, mini skein set, and I got all of them. And I was going to make Chesney a blanket for her birthday, and I was going to do them in squares and then stitch up all the squares. And I was like, well, that's going to, I didn't like that. I made one square, and I didn't like how it looked, but these are the bouquets. This is February. So I've <laughs> unwinding it and I'm reading it into a jelly roll style blanket because I love those right now so I'm going to be this will be the DK weight jelly roll flowers blanket so here's half of January that I am unwinding and knitting up and this is the other half and it looks kind of sloppy because this section I this is my third time knitting it because I changed my mind and I was like oh, I'm gonna do a pie blanket and then I didn't like how that was looking so I ripped it out I said I'm just gonna do another striped um, jelly roll because it's easy it'll be a good size every month will be a strip and so it'll be a good throw size blanket and it'll be cool well I think it'll be cool and it'll be um, a flower a year of flowers in this style so I know it looks a little sloppy but I'm hoping once I block it it will calm down and then this is another, this one has actually been my doctor appointment knitting. So this will be coming with me to all my doctor appointments that'll be coming up and probably car knitting too. I do sometimes take this one to church because it's easier to pack around than my other scrappy one, but January flower, chicken lady yarn. Also pro life, pro life knitter sent me these needle stoppers snacks and true crime all the time which is true and she sent me Bigfoot ones too which I have hiding from Waylon because he saw those but anyway so I've been working on this I'm going to keep it on this pattern I'm not going to rip it out and change it again so I'm hoping to have January done soon and then I'll start on February easy mindless knitting all right, a future whip. So that blanket that I showed you, the black and orange one, the recipient to that has a little sister. And I usually try and make them gifts once a year, either for their birthday or Christmas. And so since I wanted to make him a blanket for his for Christmas, I thought, well, I would like to make Eden a blanket for Christmas. And I have this yarn. 
And so what I think I'm going to do is just a simple DK weight striped blanket. And I'll just go from red to pink to green. There's light green and dark green and white. And I saw this color combination from a yarn dyer and I could not afford the yarn kits. And I love the colors and the colors that she put together. It was like the Starbucks holiday cup is her inspiration. And so I was like, well, I can't afford her set, but I'm going to find a, in a cheaper yarn and buy it. And that way I have similar colors and I'll have my own Starbucks. I don't drink Starbucks, but it was a really pretty color combination. And so I thought that would be a cool gift blanket idea. And so because this Holst yarn is fingering weight and I want to do DK weight, I'm going to do two held double. So it'll be like two full skeins a pretty good size blanket. I don't know if I'm going to have it done in time if I'm completely honest but I hope to have these done in November that way I can mail them even though I just said I don't like mailing stuff but they live in California and I'm not driving down there nor will I see them so my options for that are kind of limited. Excuse me. I'm going to eat an ice cube. And I constantly yell at my kids, don't eat ice cubes, you'll break a tooth. So those are all my whips. Which I honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, is a little ridiculous. But I love it. And now that I've bagged up all my whips and all my yarn and plastic, I don't feel so stressed and worried that I need to hurry up and knit before it gets ruined. Because I feel like it's protected now. And I can take my time and knit what I want, how I want, what I want with my stash. So that's all my whips. And now book talk. I finished. So I finished that one murder she wrote book. I don't remember what it's called now, but it was 10 out of 10. And then I finished um, Maggie Chefron. Chefron. Let's see. The first series, Knit One, Kill Two. I finished that book. And I've been, I had tried to read that book hundreds and hundreds of times which is an exaggeration I've tried five times to read it and I could not get through it and I just said I'm just gonna sit and read it until it got good and thankfully it got good after like seven chapters and I'm so glad that I stuck through and read it because it was the ending was phenomenal I stayed up all night once again to finish the book so I'm on to the second one in the series uh, needle to death this is a deadly yarn and I have, I'm listening to it on my Hoopla app, but I'm having, once again, I'm having a hard time getting into it. And so I thought, well, maybe if I get the book book and read it, that'll help me get into it again. Cause it's a really slow start, but they didn't, my library didn't have it. So I have it on hold. So I do have it. I can listen to it, but I'm just having a hard time listening to it. So maybe when it's available, I will go pick it up and read it but so I got this one a deadly yarn and I will be reading it in the series because I like I prefer to read it like that haven't got it read it yet and then I went straight to the murder she wrote section and I've got design for murder I didn't even I just picked three and I said we'll just do these ones because that last one was so good and I'm, this one this murder she wrote books it doesn't matter um you don't have to read it in the series. So design for murder and then hook line and murder. And I started this one last night, murder. She wrote trick or treachery. And this one is about a witch who, an alleged witch who was murdered during Halloween in Cabot Cove. And so far it's really, really good. Another one that I wish that they would have made into a movie or a, TV show. So that's that. I absolutely love these books. I did have, um, I found a murder she wrote book on my Hoopla app, you know, free app that you can use with your library. And I was trying to listen to it, but the narrator was dreadful. So I was like, mm, I'll just read these because that's awful. And I don't have, I have the Audible app, but I don't have a subscription anymore. So I couldn't even see if there was a different narrator for those books there or if it's the same one then I will be hard pass so 
just been reading and watching Murder, She Wrote and Dr. Bounty Hunter and knitting. I've been working in the garden a lot. This year has been an amazing year for our blueberries. My squash is coming up nicely. My tomatoes, not so much. Last year was a pretty good tomato year. And this year my tomatoes are just, they look burnt, but they're not, it's weird. And then that's about it. We are enjoying summer and but I'm looking forward to fall and kids going back to school and my schedule changing and just all the things. So I think I'm going to wrap it up and edit this and until next time guys, ciao.